we are going to go ahead and get started. Good evening, everyone. My name is Elizabeth Aloni. I'm with Schnepps Media. Schnepps Media is the largest local media company in the New York metro area. We publish over 100 media outlets from Manhattan, Queens, Brooklyn, the Bronx, Long Island, the East End, Philadelphia, and Palm Beach, Florida. And today we are thrilled to bring you a very valuable webinar called the First Time Home Buyer Workshop. And I am thrilled to be able to introduce you to our wonderful panelists tonight who are going to walk you through all of the important things that you need to know to become a first time home buyer. So first, I'd like to introduce you to Walter Skarowski. He is a lending sales manager for Municipal Credit Union, also known as MCU. Walter, welcome. Please tell everyone about yourself. Thank you so much uh, for that introduction. Uh, my name is Walter Skaronsky, my NMLS ID 598806. Uh, I'm a lending sales manager at Municipal Credit Union. Uh, been there for about three years. I've been in the industry for well over 25 years. And um, uh, like myself and the other two on this panel, we are first time home buyer specialists. So we're really looking forward to this. Fantastic. Thank you so much for being here, Walter. Next, I'd like to introduce Adam Ganda, who is also a lending sales manager at Municipal Credit Union. Adam, welcome. Thank you, Elizabeth. Um, yep, my name is uh, Adam Gonda. Uh, my NMLS ID is one three two six two five five. Uh, one of the other lending sales managers here, uh, Long Wall and Omar, um, been with MCU for about three years as well, and uh, been in the industry uh, going on twelve years. Uh, twelve years this year as well. Um, so we're happy to be here. We specialize in uh, those first time home buyers, and uh, we're excited to have this discussion with you. Fantastic! Thanks so much, Adam. And now I'd like to introduce you all to Omar Osario. Usar Osaria. He's a mortgage sales manager, also with Municipal Credit Union. Omar, welcome. Please tell everyone a little bit about yourself. Thank you for the introduction. My name is Omar, and I'm LSID 1950417. I'm a specialist of first-time home buyers, alongside with Walter and Adam. Been with the credit union for about 10 years, and uh, just want to help everyone achieve the dream of home ownership. Happy to have you guys tonight. Thanks so much, Omar. Wonderful, wonderful dream. So I just wanted to read uh, this disclaimer here. MCU has provided this presentation for informational and illustrative purpose only. And is any liability to any person for its content or any person's reliance on that content. This presentation does not constitute legal or tax advice. Each borrower should consult with legal, tax, real estate, and lending professionals with respect to his or her particular situation. So let's get started. Walter, can you walk us through this? All right, thank you. So uh, this is a first time home buyers workshop. Uh, look, welcome to our first time home buyers workshop, right? So in this course, uh, we're going to explore what it takes to buy your first home. Uh, you know, look, before you get too far in the home buying process, you should definitely make sure that you're ready to own a home. So how are you going to do that, right? How do I know if I'm ready to be a homeowner? What should I be thinking about? Our goal today is to arm you with enough information to answer those questions and help determine if owning a home is right for you. So this is our agenda. Um, we're going to be covering, am I ready? Should I buy or not? Can I get a mortgage? Down payment, closing costs uh, that are involved. Um, what do I need to know? Who's part of the process? Terms that you would... Uh, want to know uh, what's in a mortgage payment. And then the other section will be getting started, how to obtain your credit report, uh, excuse me, credit report, pre-approvals, pre-qualifications, and finding a realtor. All right, great. So terms that you should know, amortization. So what this is, this is the repayment of loan principal over time with scheduled payments that consist of both principal and interest. Uh, the loan balance actually declines by the amount of principal in the scheduled payment. So on your typical mortgage, you're going to have uh, amortization, you're gonna have principal and interest. The more length of time that you're in a mortgage, the more principal you're paying towards the balance. That's what that means. Uh, annual percentage rate, also known as APR. 
So what the APR does, it shows the cost of your mortgage loan as a yearly rate. Uh, the APR includes upfront fees such as points, uh, as well as interest, and is intended to show you the true cost of your loan. So essentially, when you're comparing one loan to another or one lender to another lender, uh, be sure to compare the APRs uh, to get the true picture of what each one will cost you. Closing costs. So this is the cost of getting a mortgage uh, in addition to coming up with the down payment. Typically or usually it's a three to 6% of the total loan amount. So for every $100,000 you're looking to borrow, keep in mind you're gonna need about three to $6,000 uh, in addition to the down payment for closing costs. Credit Bureau. So this is, these are agencies that collect statistics on individual payment records on loans credit cards, and other debts. Debt to income ratio, or DTI. Uh, this is the ratio of your total debt payments, such as mortgages, car loans, student loans, credit cards, medical bills, things like that. And we divide that by your gross income and express it as a percentage. Home equity. So this is the actual property's current market value, less any liens that are attached to the property, right? So what that means is, so you've got the estimated value, you would subtract out the mortgage amount, and that's what we call home equity. So the longer you make payments towards your mortgage, the more equity you will have. Uh, increasing your principal payments on your mortgage could also help speed this process up. So that last piece right there, what that means is, you know, if you're making your mortgage payments on a regular basis and you make one additional payment or two additional payments a year and put it towards the principal, that's going to help expedite that loan. So where you would have, like, say, a 30-year loan, it's going to reduce the term sometimes by five years, if not more. Escrow. So this is an account set up on your behalf in which a portion of your monthly payment is held to pay property taxes and insurance. Gross income. So this is the money you wish you were making, right? Before all the taxes and stuff got taken out. So gross income is the amount of money earned before taxes or types of payroll deductions. Points. So this is a percentage of the loan amount. Uh, in order to get a lower interest rate, you may have to you may have the option to pay points up front. So one point would represent one percent of the loan amount. So if you have say a two hundred thousand dollar mortgage. $2,000 would be the cost or 1% to pay that one point. Uh, Pre-qualification. While this is not a pre-approval, this gives you an estimate of how much money you can borrow. So when I compare pre-qualifications to the next term, the pre-approval, a pre-qualification is more of a conversation about what you can be approved for. So we would talk about your income assets and credit. Whereas a pre-approval, is an actual commitment letter from the lender to make a loan to a specified borrower prior to the identification of a specific property. And with those, we typically would verify income assets and credit. So we'd be looking at your income docs, we'd be looking at your bank statements, things like that. So uh, just keep in mind, even if uh, you are pre-approved, there is still no guarantee that you will get the loan to buy or not to buy, right? So that's the big question. So before you get too far into the home buying process, you should be sure that you are ready to own a home. There are some factors to consider. So here's, you know, here's the advantages of buying. You can build equity and better future home. There is that sense of community. Um, you can go to PTA meetings. You can meet people in the community, go to school functions, church functions, religious functions, whatever it is. Uh, personalization. This is the part where I talk about my 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 crazy uncle Enzo. He uh, he used to have, uh, he lived uh, in Virginia, and uh, you know his personalization idea was to have a big purple door on the front of his house. No one in the neighborhood liked it, but he loved it. And you know what? He bought the house. He could do whatever he wants with it. So that's that's what we mean by personalization. Um, and just also keep in mind that buying does or may offer certain uh, tax advantages. So renting. So there are advantages uh, to renting as well. There's no surprise expenses. Amenities are typically included. Uh, usually it's much easier to move because you don't have as much stuff uh, and there's less maintenance. So then, you know, the topics, right? So there are topics regarding buying. So when you buy, you also have to come up with maintenance and other expenses. So you're going to be paying taxes, 
upkeep of the house, things like that. Uh, there are upfront costs to purchasing a home, uh, market variability. You always hear, at least up here in the Northeast, about property values always increasing, but sometimes values can go down. So that's what we mean by market variability. Uh, and it's less flexible to move. You typically, you have more stuff. It's more you know, challenging to move to another location. Um, you know, as far as renting uh, regarding topics, there's no tax benefit. You, you, get, you get nothing for renting. You own no equity in the apartment that you're renting. You have no control over rent increases, and you could very well have noisy neighbors. Or a purple door neighbor. <laughs> <laughs> Uncle Enzo, rest in peace. <laughs> so can I qualify documents to gather? Um, so you would always want to talk to a loan officer about being pre-qualified. Uh, a pre-qualification isn't an approval for a mortgage, and it's a less formal way to estimate the range of home prices for you. So this was the this is the one where you're having the conversation about buying a home. So you wouldn't have to fill out a loan application. And the lender, you know, typically uses the information provided by you to make this assessment. Um, these are definitely some documents that will be helpful for a pre-qualification and may be required for a pre-approval. You definitely want to gather two to three years of your federal tax returns uh, with all schedules attached. I know there's a ton of papers that come with it. Whenever we ask for them, we do ask for all of the additional uh, pages that come with it. Two years of W-2 statements. Uh, employment history. So typically we're looking for a two-year employment history, but that doesn't mean that if you have less than a two-year work history that you won't qualify. We just, you know, initially for the application purposes, we do need to cover a two-year work history. Uh, paycheck stubs that include year-to-date income. Oftentimes we're looking for the most recent month. Uh, savings and checking account statements. So this is where the money is that you're going to be using for the down payment and the closing costs. And uh, any form of government issued uh, identification is usually satisfactory, whether it be a, a state driver's license, a passport, any one of those things. Uh, you know, And in some circumstances, we will require more documentation, such as a divorce decree, child support, and bankruptcy discharges. So can I qualify some more, right? So we're gonna continue with this. There are four factors that count the most in qualifying for a loan. Credit history. So credit history, we're going to spend a little more time, uh, you know, a few more slides. Credit history is extremely important. So your credit score gives lenders an indication of your willingness to pay, uh, as indicated by your history of payments. So in addition to determining your eligibility, your score, your credit score will also affect the interest rate, terms, and condition of your mortgage loan. So the better your credit score, the better uh, mortgage programs are going to be available to you. So it's very important to have your, your credit uh, credit scores, credit record in, in, in as best shape as possible. Debts. So a lender will obtain a credit report and review your debts. Generally include payments uh, on all loans, charge cards, et cetera, that you make on a monthly basis. A good goal is to spend anywhere between 36 to 38% of your gross income on all debts, meaning no more than that. Employment history. So your job history is important, is an important consideration for your ability to qualify for a mortgage. The more job stability you've sustained, the better chance lenders will uh, you know, be to help you get the key to a place to call your own. A steady, secure job will make your loan application that much stronger. Um, but again, like I mentioned earlier, you don't necessarily have to have two years uh, consistently of employment. Uh, one scenario would be, let's say it's a nurse who just graduated uh, over the summer. Obviously, those you know months prior to that, um, well, maybe not just this summer. Let's say she's working or she or he is working for a year and a half and had a six month educational portion of it to you know make up the two years. Those are situations where we would consider education as part of your two-year employment history. Uh, last part of this would be the down payment. So do not count yourself out just because you don't have a lot of money saved up in the bank. Uh, with the protection of mortgage insurance, lenders can offer mortgages to qualified borrowers uh, with low down payments. 
So down payment. What's a down payment? When the when you borrow money for a home, lenders usually require you to contribute some of your own money to purchase this, you know, to purchase the house or the home. Typically, a larger down payment, twenty percent, is the standard. Um, it, it means there's a lower interest rate because lenders have less risk when you have more ownership in the property. So, however, you do not need twenty percent down uh, to get a home. Mortgage insurance companies, also known as MI or incurred PMI, private mortgage insurance, what these companies do is they help qualified borrowers realize the dream of home ownership sooner uh, by compensating the lender for losses should a borrower be unable to make payments. Mortgage insurance allows a borrower to get in a home without having to come up with that 20% down payment. Uh, the cost of MI, mortgage insurance, depends on your credit score and the size of your down payment. So on, the, on this journey of home ownership, you're gonna be meeting a lot of people, right? So who is who? You will work with many professionals on the road to home ownership. Each person provided, uh, I'm sorry, each person provides a specific service to help you become a homeowner, loan officer. So I've always considered this the most important part, right? Not because I just do it, but also because it is your first contact with someone in the mortgage world, right? So what do we do? A loan officer represents one lending institution and their loan programs. They help you choose the best mortgage loan based upon your situation and will help you complete the pre-approval, pre-qualification, and loan application process. An appraiser. So what an appraiser does, this is an individual who is licensed to estimate the worth or fair market value of the property that you're purchasing. Closing or settlement agent. Uh, these are the parties that uh, conduct the closing meeting. So um, this role may sometimes be filled by an attorney, a title company, or a real estate agent, depending on the state where the property is located. I know uh, here in New York, it's done by attorneys, but I also know that, say, in Pennsylvania, where we're licensed, um, it's often done by the realtors. So, you know, it, it depends on the state. It's It's state specific. Uh, the last part of this would be loan servicer. So this is the entity that collects your mortgage payments. It may or may not be the same lender uh, and pays taxes and insurance and mortgage insurance if required on your behalf. So mortgage insurer, PMI, private mortgage insurer. So mortgage insurance allows a borrower to get in a home without having to come up with a 20% down payment. And it compensates the lender for losses should a borrower be unable to make those payments. A property inspector. So a property inspector is different than an appraiser, right? So a property inspector works for the buyer. So once you find the home of your dreams and you go to contract, you would hire a property inspector to do an inspection of the property. So they're an individual that conducts an examination of the home. The inspector will look for issues that may affect the value of the property and can assess the condition of the property. And last, uh, last on here, but not least, right? So the real estate agent, this is a person who acts as an intermediary between sellers and buyers of the property being purchased. The agent can provide helpful and specific community information. So what goes into your mortgage payment? Your, your, your monthly mortgage payment is likely to include four parts. Uh, we call it PITI. Yeah, that's a fancy word for principal interest taxes and insurance. So the principal portion of it is your monthly payment that reduces the balance of your loan amount. Uh, we spoke about that a little bit earlier as far as like what the principal is. The interest, right? So this is the this is what you got to pay to borrow the money. Uh, the portion of your monthly payment that is applied, is applied towards your interest. Taxes, if escrowed, uh, usually represents one twelfth of your annual tax, uh, tax bill. So it's a monthly uh, payment of your taxes, your uh, real estate taxes, and then insurance. So property insurance is required on every home. A monthly insurance amount is usually included with each mortgage payment, and it's held in escrow until the bill is due to be paid. Um, mortgage insurance, uh, PMI, private mortgage insurance, uh, may be required when putting less than 20% down, and all of these make up your monthly mortgage payment. So understanding credit. So credit, again, uh, we can't stress this enough how important credit is. So your credit score has a major impact on a mortgage from your ability to qualify 
uh, to the interest rate you, that you eventually get on the mortgage. Um, the lender will order your credit report to assess your ability and willingness to pay a mortgage. It's, it's a great idea to order a copy of your own credit report before you even start applying for a mortgage. Um, your credit record can be obtained directly from the credit reporting agencies, uh, which is an agency that collects statistics on individual payment records on loans, credit cards, and other debts. Um, oftentimes there may be mistakes on the report. So it, it is a really good idea uh, to order one on your own now uh, review it to make sure that it contains accurate information. Federal law requires each of the three nationwide consumer credit reporting companies, so that's Equifax, Experian, and TransUnion, to give you a free credit report every 12 months. And this part is in bold for a reason. If you ask for it, they're not just going to call you up and offer their services. You have to contact them. And uh, we have found that the easiest and most reputable website uh, to do this is www.annualcreditreport.com. So you're going to order your credit reports, and now you're going to be reviewing your credit reports. So um, check your credit for inaccurate information. Sometimes creditors may not report to all three agencies, so the information and score will vary from the different lenders. Um, here, here's what you could expect to see on a credit report. There'll be personal information. Uh, it, it's definitely not uncommon to have variations or misspellings of your name. Most credit reporting agencies leave these variations in there so that way it continues to maintain that link between your identity and the credit information. Um, you know, some, some people uh, will have a middle initial appear on one credit card, on another credit card, it might not be there but you're still the same person. So it's important to keep those, you know, history and those records uh, intact and, you know, overlapping them. So account history, this, uh, this section includes each of your credit accounts and details about your payment history. Uh, it's important to make sure that the data here is correct too. So if you know that you've been paying your bills on time, never had a late, and all of a sudden you're reviewing one of these and you see a late payment, you would want to, you know, contact that, a particular creditor to find out what the you know what the problem was and try to resolve it. Public records. So this includes information like bankruptcies, judgments, tax liens, and court records. And keep in mind that some of this information may stay on your credit report for up to seven to ten years. Uh, credit inquiry. So you're going to see a list of parties who have accessed your credit report within the past two years. That'll show up on your credit report as well. What can I afford? So in addition to your lender, there are many online calculators uh, available to help determine how much house you can afford. An easy guideline to follow is the 38% rule. So your total monthly debt should never add up to more than 38% of your gross income. That's your take-home income. Uh, this is called DTI or debt to income. This is definitely a term that you will hear uh, mortgage people kind of throw out there like you know, you you're you're supposed to know what this stuff is, but I, I always explain it, you know, because it's it's not a common term. Uh, so DTI, debt to income, to do a quick estimate of what you can afford, there's two basic numbers that you need. You need your gross income, that's the income before taxes and deductions are taken out, and you need to know what your monthly debits are. This is going to include payments on charge cards, auto payments, other installment loans, things like that but you wouldn't uh, include your rent or house payment in that number. So we give just a little example there. And again, you're gonna get these screenshots so you'll be able to see it. But uh, for example, if you're making $36,000 gross income before taxes, you would take that number and you would divide it by 12, which gives you 3000. You would multiply that by 38% because that's that 38% rule uh, to determine what your maximum debt is. So it comes out to 1,140. You would subtract out what your current monthly debts are. And then the maximum mortgage payment you're left with is $940 per month. Steps to choosing your home. So before you shop for your home, here are some tips uh, to get you started. Know what your budget is. Uh, I have, uh, whenever I'm speaking to members, we, we call them members because we're a credit union. Wherever I'm speaking to members, um, I'm always asking them, well, what's your budget? 
Because if I can approve you for a million dollar loan, do you really want to have to pay a million dollar mortgage? Oftentimes the answer is no, right? So I always ask, so what's your budget? What are you comfortable with paying on a monthly basis? The next big piece is do not get emotionally attacked. This is a business transaction. You are, you know, there are going to be attorneys. There are going to be sellers and buyers and realtors and all these people. So just, you know, keep in mind, it is a uh, business transaction and try not to get emotionally attached. I mean, you're going to fall in love with the home anyway, but don't let anybody see it, right? So do your research. Definitely know where you want to live. Uh, one of the first questions I ask when I'm interviewing uh, you know, people for their pre-approvals uh, is typically, you know, where do you want to live? And they say, you know, oftentimes they come back with me and say, I don't know. I just want to get pre-approved for a mortgage. I'm like, well, how do you not know where you want to live? Like, figure out where you want to live. Do the research, you know, figure out where, what's going to be closest to your job or what's the best school for your kids or um, you know, in my case, where are the best restaurants? Uh, you know, how close can you get to them? Things like that. You know, that's how I decided where I moved to. Um, look at more than one house. If you fall in love with that first house and you're and you're fortunate enough to, you know, buy it and move forward on it, that's great. That rarely happens, right? So you definitely want to get out there, look at a bunch of houses, take your time, really try to, you know narrow it down as far as what you're looking to purchase. And look, once you've determined how much home you can afford, the next step is going to be to find that home that is right for you. Choosing an agent. So with the world of information now available at your fingertips, is a real estate agent still necessary in the home buying process? Look, this is probably going to be the largest financial decision of your life. So you will need a, a quote unquote buyer's agent that represents you, uh, the buyer in the buying process. Here are some tips to help you find the agent uh, that's right for you. Experience. You're going to want someone who is experienced, uh, you know, uh, in the areas that you're looking to live. You're going to, you you're, you're you're probably going to want somebody that has X amount of experience. Whatever that number is in your head, that's the type of experience you're going to want the realtor to have. What area do they cover? So where I am, I'm, I'm out in Suffolk County on Long Island. Um, if I was looking for a home out here, I certainly wouldn't be using a realtor from, say, Connecticut. It doesn't make sense to do that. You want to try to narrow it down to someone who works in the area that you're going to be you know, looking to purchase a home. Credentials. Um, it's, it's totally okay to ask people for references or to say, Hey, you know, how many houses have you sold in the past year? Or, you know, as a buyer, are you comfortable with someone who's selling 30 homes a year? Or would you prefer someone who's closing, say 10 homes a year? It may be, you know, it's a, it's a different feel. I mean, the person who's selling 30 homes a year may have a whole staff of people and you may never get to speak to that person more than once. Whereas if you speak to someone who's less busier, I'm sorry, yeah, no, less busier, they'll have more time to work with you. It really depends on you know the relationship that you're looking to have. Um, and definitely interview prospective agents. You don't have to go with the first person that you uh, meet. So definitely shop around like anything else and just look for someone that you're comfortable with. And, and just keep in mind, right? You're gonna be in this relationship with the realtor for her, however long it takes to buy that home. So make sure that you're comfortable working with them for six months, say, you know? So that's, um, those are some of the things to just keep an eye out for when choosing an agent. Home Advantage, we uh, we here at uh, Municipal Credit Union um, have something called Home Advantage and it can help you search, buy, sell, and save on your next real estate transaction. Uh, you would use it to find the home of your dreams, sell your existing home and research the market. Uh, what they do is they connect you with a top local real estate agent uh, and they will save you money at closing. This is available to you as a municipal credit union member at no additional cost. So programs for first time home buyers from down payment assistance to homeowner counseling to lender paid mortgage insurance, there's a wide range of programs that can help you get into the into your first home. Here are some uh, that MCU participates in. 
first time home buyer rate discount. So we're gonna to get to that on the next slide. That's definitely one of our more popular items, uh, programs, excuse me, 97% financing. So this is great because you only have to put down 3% uh, instead of the typical 5%. So this is definitely um, great if you don't have you know a lot of assets ready to purchase the home. And we also have, you know, currently we're running a $900 uh, fee waiver where you know at, at closing we are credit, crediting you back nine hundred dollars, so we're saving you money there. Um, we've got a great first on home buyer rate discount, and we also have where you would only have to put down three percent. So the first time home buyer rate discount. So in order to qualify for this, you would need to be a first time home buyer. What does that mean? So that means you would not have owned a home in the past three years um, or had a mortgage within the past three years. So let me read that again. In the past three years, you must have not owned a home or had a mortgage. And the discount is 0.25 or a quarter percent off of any of our fixed rate mortgages that MCU municipal credit offers. The rate discount uh, cannot be combined with any other offers though. So we're here to help. Products, uh, you know, to support your financial needs. We do, we do it all, right? So we do checking and savings, personal loans, auto loans, home equity products, which are very popular right now, and of course, mortgages. So if you're looking to make an appointment for any of the above products, uh, you know, please go to nymcu.org uh, and you know, check out our website. Wow, thank you That's, so much. That was thank really. You. Fantastic, Walter. I mean, it's so, there's so much to think about and, and, and put in your mind when you're a first time home buyer and to be able to, the way you broke it down was really very, very helpful. I'm, I know that there's a lot of questions because uh, this is such a wonderful, important topic. Um, Adam, Omar, there's some questions that we can answer with everyone. Um, uh, there was only a few that came through the Q and A. Um, as we were going through the presentation, uh, Omar and I had um, addressed them all. Um, did you want to go over them? Um, I don't know. Can everybody see these? Yeah. Why don't we go over go over some of them because I think it's a good kind of some of the people who maybe didn't have questions or maybe didn't see the the chat that was going back and forth. Um, sure. For them to be able to hear. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so one of the first questions we had was uh, if somebody had bought an investment property, um, would they still be considered a first time home buyer if they're buying a house to live in primarily? Um, so Walt, you want to you take that one? Sure. So the answer is maybe, right? So you would have to, if you owned it, if you own, I'm sorry, if you sold the home or, you know, finished paying off the mortgage three years ago, that's the rule. You would have to be mortgage free or, you know, home free with that, within the past three years. And then you would qualify for that first time home buyer discount. And Omar, if you wanted to jump in, I think your mic's on, uh, your mic's off. So. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, just not own a home or have a mortgage within the last three years. Both of those are qualifications for first time home buyers. And uh, that includes not being on uh, someone's title on a home. So if you did uh, add yourself, if someone added you on a title to a home, you won't be considered as a first-time buyer. Right. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Um, the next one was um, somebody didn't really want to uh, work with a broker just yet. They're not sure if they can afford to buy. Um, they just wanted to attend the open houses uh, for the time being, and they wanted to know if uh, it puts them at a disadvantage. What are your thoughts on that? I had shared a bit before, I'm sorry, well, uh, or Omar, um, I'll share what I had, had shared. Um, you know, if attending open houses on your own is fine, um, you know, until uh, you have that conversation, uh, realtors may not accompany you to the open houses since they typically want, you know, that proof that you have the affordability uh, to be going to these homes that you're looking at. Yeah, I might, I might add on to that. Just, um, I would say, you know what? Zillow, right? Um, you know, Trulia, all of these great apps are there just to, if you want to just scroll through houses and try to figure out what neighborhood you want to move to. Um, but look, there's nothing wrong with going to open houses. It's just, um, you know, if you're not ready to purchase a home, um, 
sometimes it can be deflating. I mean, you could be looking at a house going, man, I wish I could be buying this house, you know, and then only to realize that you're not ready for it. So um, look, if you're emotionally prepared for it, go for it. Go look at houses. Enjoy yourself. It's it's fun. Uh, well, something just came in uh, through the chat here, and um, I just thought we might want to talk for a moment more about it. Uh, somebody is curious if there are grants that can be used. Um, so I had shared that there are, um, but I don't know if we wanted to talk any more in, in depth about them. Yeah. Omar, you want to take that? Yep. So uh, at Municipal Credit Union, we definitely offer and assist with grants. We, if you, you know, there's a few grant programs that we are partnered with. One is New York City's Housing Preservation and Development. Those grants are for purchases within the five boroughs. And you can obtain up to 20% of your down payment via that grant program. And it, it does have uh, limitations of income. Just keep in mind. There's also We're also partnered with the Federal Home Bank. Those are that's another grant program we have. They can provide up to $19,500 in closing costs and down payment assistance. It is based on the area medium income that you will be purchasing in. And for some of these grants, you do have to have a, a you know, be in an agreement for us to even submit it. So it's always important when you are going through the pre-approval process, mentioning that, you know, that you're interested in one of the grant programs. And we'll also screen and make sure that if you do qualify for a grant program, we will be we will bring it up and in, in the conversation. And then we also have our own in-house grant program. This is the MCU Foundation. We're looking to help our members certain criteria based on income and um membership length. You just have to be a member for over 12 months, be in good standing, and be fully engaged member. Some of those parameters, you know, just have to meet. And then we'll talk about how much we can qualify you for. Perfect. <clears throat> um, this one here, um, somebody is a veteran um, and they are curious um, about any options or avenues that might be available to them. Sure. So, um, you know, if you're looking for veteran specific loans, like VA loans, things like that, um, that is not something that we currently uh, offer to our members. But, um, you know, look, uh, when it comes to a VA loan, I know there are certain um, either discounts or I believe you can go like 100% financing. There are certain niche, you know, pieces to it. So if it is, you know, if a um, if a veteran, if a VA loan is something that you specifically need, um, we wouldn't be able to help you. But um, you know, if you're looking just to compare rates to what a VA loan is, and it's like a you know a different type of transaction where you're going to be putting at least three percent down, something like that definitely reach out to us. We are competitive, um, you know, with other lenders and lending, you know, and their programs that they do have to offer. But if you're specifically looking for a VA loan because of uh, the criteria of the loan, uh, you would want to go directly to a VA lender. I see a great question here because you were talking about credit and how important that is in your credit score. And someone was asking, what is the recommended FICO score to obtain a mortgage? Yeah, I'm able to assist on that one. In regards to credit, uh, if, it depends on, on your down payment, but we typically do look for a, down, uh, a minimum credit score of 620 and above. And that would pretty much ha help you start the pre-qualification and pre-approval process The credit score of 620 and above. If you're looking to obtain the best rate in the market and when you see the proposed as low as rates on a lender's website. They typically are looking for 725 and above. So it's something that you would have to, to gauge. Or are you ready to buy a home now? Or would you like to work on your credit and then apply? Because you do want the best rate possible. And if you're putting more than five and more than 20% down, you also have to gauge on credit is a big factor in what your PMI payments will be. If you do have a 720 credit score, your monthly PMI would be a lot lower than someone who would probably have a 620 credit score. Someone just asked, thank you for that, Omar. Um, 
someone just says that they're interested in moving to Pennsylvania and wants to know if they can work with you for a mortgage. Can you share with everyone what areas you focus on at Municipal Credit Union? We're, we're, yep, we're able to lend in, uh, currently we lend in four states. So that would be New York, New Jersey, Connecticut, and Pennsylvania. Those are the four states that we currently lend in. Fantastic. I did, someone also asked for your contact information because she said, I, I want to talk to you ASAP. So mm -hmm. I, I put it in the chat for everyone to be able to see and, and take, but I also, you're going to get an email tomorrow, 24 hours from today, and it will also have their contact information there as well. Um, so uh -huh. you know, don't hesitate because we're happy to answer all these questions. But as we said earlier, everyone's, everyone's situation is a little bit different. And these are yep. the experts that can help you specifically with the questions that you have in the unique situation you may be in. Absolutely. <clears throat> um, so there was a, a couple other ones here. Um, someone is retired. Um, they wanted to know if it'd be difficult uh, to get a mortgage. Well, absolutely not. I mean, if you're retired, um, you just we just qualify you a little differently uh, than someone who is employed. But it is not, um, you know, any more challenging to do a mortgage for someone who's retired than someone who's employed. Uh, typically, when you're retired. Um, we would ask for, you know, what your retirement income is. Um, so you would need to provide um, a, a, a pension award letter. Uh, if you're receiving a pension, if you're receiving social security, you would have to provide a social security award letter, um, you know, things like that. that so you're, even though you're retired, you're still earning income. And a lot of times, you know, with that income, because, you um, sometimes it's tax free, we are sometimes able to what we call gross it up, quote unquote, gross it up, where you're making X amount of dollars. But if it's something that is tax free, I'm sorry, it's, it's something that you're paying tax on, we're able to gross it up uh, to give you more qualifying income. But to answer the question simply, yes, the answer is yes, always yes. I like this one. Is is there typically a good time of the year to purchase a home? That's something that you should consider. It depends on whose crystal ball you're looking at. Omar, how's your crystal ball look today? Do you have any specific months? Uh, I mean, the, the typical purchase market is either spring or fall. That's your typical market. Um, you know, you buy in the spring. So that way, when, when the kitties are out of school, you can move and then you move in in the fall. The other time of year would be in the fall is typically when people purchase homes. Great. We just got an, a question that came in. What does the typical mortgage look like for a first time home homeowner with great credit? And when he says a typical well, mortgage, I'm probably talking about well, if, they, if they're talking about interest rate, um, if they go to our website, uh, you know, nymcu.org, we post our rates there on a daily basis. Um, so you could certainly look at that. If you are a first time home buyer, just keep in mind to take that quarter percent discount uh, off of any of our fixed products when you are looking at those rates. Someone asked, if I'm not ready, can you help me get ready? Absolutely. Not ready. Go ahead, Omar. Yeah, absolutely. So it, it all depends. If you're not ready, help you get ready. Absolutely. If you want to get ready and you're looking at maybe my credit's not there and, you know, you come in as a proposed, you know, you want a pre-approval, you can speak to myself out of my world and say, right now my credit's not where I want it to be at. I really want to improve that. You definitely have some, some partnerships that we can assist you on with credit repair and typically, you know, it, it takes a while for that to happen, but it's some, something good that you can, you know, sign up for and then improve your chances to obtaining a website. I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> I, I was looking at the chat <laughs> and obtaining a mortgage. Yeah. And that, uh, chat, also... that chat function's dangerous sometimes. It's like, <laughs> yeah, that's why we put our cell phone. <laughs> you got to put your cell phone away and do not look at the chat. Okay. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Omar. Keep going. Yeah. Buddy. And they also help, you know, we also have partnerships with someone who can help you with the budget. Maybe if your savings are not there, they can help you also, you know, create a budget, create a plan. And uh, let's say right now, if your rent is $1,000 or $2,000, whatever the amount is, 
if your proposed mortgage is thirty five hundred, that amount of money that's going to be the difference between your current rent and your mortgage, you should be saving that up. That prepares you to pay for your mortgage at the time that you will be in a mortgage. You see that you can handle it, and you know you're also saving that money up for your down payment and closing costs. So there's a lot of help that we can offer. Just you know, connect with us and. We see what programs that you would have to sign you up for in regards to your needs to be ready. That's a really important point. You know, I think people think about looking at the house. And it was funny, Walter, when you said, you know, don't fall in love with the house. You know, a lot of people put that first, but really that's putting the cart before the horse. And that if yeah. people can come to you first, you can really like, oh, Marla, you're sharing, help people get ready. And also give them the advice to set them up for the best success so that they don't make those first time mistakes. You know, that's what's so nice about working with you is that even though you're a first time home buyer, you don't have to make all the first time home buyer mistakes by being able to ask those questions and for, you know, you to be, because you really don't know what you don't know. And when you go to an expert like yourselves, um, though you're, you can really give everyone those nooks and crannies of information that are so critical when they do find the house that they want. Yep. And, and there's so many different and there's so many different scenarios like you could have someone who has the money for the down payment and closing costs or you may have someone who's not quite there yet um you know there, there's a lot of different scenarios so that's what we do all day long just try to help people uh you know get them into that home of their dreams whether they're ready to do it right now six months from now or a year from now and like Omar said which is great advice the, the money, that you would be spending on a mortgage, you should be putting the difference that that fifteen hundred bucks or whatever the scenario was. You should be putting that away in the bank, um, saving for that purchase. So that was excellent advice. You know, there are so many great questions, and just goes to show you how many different ways you could slice this. You know, and and how unique everyone's situation is. You know, someone asked if I put down sixty percent down payment, is it easier for me to get a mortgage than a low down payment? And, you know, Adam answered, it would likely be, but not necessarily. So I think, you know, th those are kind of those nuances that the conversation can help flush out. Well, even with even with someone who's putting, say, 60 percent down, I would say to them, look, it sounds like you got way too much money on hand. You may want to speak to your account before you dump all that money into a house. Right. There may be other benefits to putting less money down and taking out more of a mortgage. So. Um, I would I would automatically say speak to your account. It's it sounds like you have way too much money, <laughs> which is a good problem to have, right? But you know, yeah, but it, it, that's important advice to give somebody that it's not necessarily going to be into the house, and that you should get the right team together. You know, I think that's so important in home buying is that you know you you turn to you first because it's the really it's when you think about it, it's the foundation of the house. It's it's what you need to have a house, which is the finances. And then it's about building that team around you, whether it be an accountant, attorney, agent, um, all those other people. And I'm sure you have a lot of referrals also to those those individuals that really can be trusted. Yep. Elizabeth, this uh, Walt and Omar too, we just had, um, this is a good question that just came in. Um, so right now somebody's paying $3,215 for their apartment and wanted to know if the bank or credit union would factor that in uh, when determining a qualification for a mortgage. Yeah. So, I mean, typically the answer is, uh, as Adam, I think, noted in there, no, but um, but there, there is a little bit more to unpack from that. Right. Because I love to talk and I love to give long answers, but that's I just it's I love what I do. I do what I love. Right. So when you have um, ranked at whatever the number was, thirty three, twenty five, I saw it for a second. Um, what the, what that does is that factors into what we call payment shock, meaning. If you're paying 30 something hundred dollars a month and you're applying for a mortgage that's going to be a total payment of say four thousand dollars a month the lender is typically going to be more comfortable with someone like yourself because the payment shock is not as great so you're not going from three thousand to nine thousand you're going from three thousand to four thousand so there's not what we call that much payment shock um so that's, you know, that's where that would factor in. But, um, you know, that that's pretty much the extent of it. And of course, if you're paying it on time, that's that's a compensating factor as well. Wonderful. 
We have another one here. If someone has bought an investment property, will they be considered a new home buyer if they're buying a house to live in? Yes. So it doesn't <laughs> buy, it doesn't matter what that you should do with that short answer. Well, <laughs> um, so, you, <laughs> so it doesn't matter what you buy a home or an apartment or a condo. None of those things matter. If you owned it, it doesn't matter what you used it for. Is that correct? That's correct. If, if, to be considered a first-time home buyer, um, you know the you business property. Like, let's say you bought, um, you own a store. You bought that property. Would would that be also considered a first-time home buyer purchase? No. If you okay. if you owned a pro a store, no. That's that's commercial real estate. That would be very different. It's okay. not residential. We typically have that in like an LLC. And where it's not really attached to your name. Mm -hmm. So that's where the different lies in. So it pretty much is any property that you've been, been on title for that's under your name. Okay, great. Do we have time for maybe one more question? Absolutely. Always. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, let's see. Right. Want to pick it, Adam? There's a lot of good ones. Um, yep, let's see. So um, somebody's asking about the 401k. Um, and if it is unfavorable for them to utilize it for a down payment. Ooh, that's a good question. So it, it really depends on your personal situation, right? Um, and again, a question like that, I would always say speak to your accountant because there are tax implications when cashing in a 401k to purchase a home. Um, and there's certainly, if you're borrowing against your 401k, they certainly will charge you interest on the on your own money to borrow it. So there are implications as far as that goes. But look, if you know if this is what you have in the bank and this is what's going to get you into the home of your dreams, um, you know that's a business decision for you and your accountant to decide. Um, and as far as just another fun fact, right? When it comes to four hundred one ks. If you were to borrow money against your 401k, that money that you have to pay back, let's say it's $500 a month, doesn't go towards your DTI. And what is DTI, everyone? Debt to income. So if you're paying yourself back on a 401k loan, you do not have to hit yourself with the debt as well. So that's a that's a big factor. So, you know, I wouldn't... Um, like a lot of people, I wouldn't say buy that new car because you may not qualify now for a mortgage. But if they, you know, had already spoken to their accountant and they want to borrow money from their own 401k, I would say that's perfectly okay. You do not have to worry about that payment because it does not go towards your debt to income. Fantastic. You know, before we say goodbye, there's one thing I wanted to ask you, the, the, each of you. I, it's a surprise question. But the, the question is, um, you know, what would be the one piece of advice you would give a family member when they're thinking about buying their first home? What what little nugget? <laughs> Walter, you, you lifted your eyebrows. You want to go first? <laughs> well, what I would say, you know what, what I would say is, um, you know, do the research, right? You have so uh, Adam and I were talking about AI and all this other stuff that's available to everyone today, right? And I hope I didn't just steal your answer, Adam. I apologize if I did, but there's so much information out there. Get on your get on your phone, go through Zillow, you know, get out in your car, go drive to places. I'm 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 big on that. Get out of the house, take a look at where you're going to live. This is the place where you're going to be spending the next 10 years of your life or 20 years of your life. Um, get a good feel for the area. That's how I decided where I was going to live. I, I walked around. I was like, wow, look at all these restaurants. I went for a tree lighting. Um, I saw all the different families and the community was out there getting involved. I was like, I really want to live here. So that's what my decision was. So I would say do the research. Um, you know, uh, you got so much information available on your cell phone use it and if not turn the key get your butt outside and drive around and check out check out the different towns i love it i love it what about you omar so a question that comes up a lot within you know group of friends family and people you meet is right now it may not be the best time to buy a house 
Omar, what do you believe is the best time to buy a house? And I always say the best time to buy a house is now. Because if you look at a house right now, saying the market is not, you know, what I want it to be. You know, I want this house, but the rates are right now at a six out of five. I want it to be lower. If you, if you end up waiting three or four years to see when that rate drops, that house that was worth that $500,000 may be worth a lot more. Mm -hmm. So now you you could have purchased that house at 500. And then, you know, now it's worth, let's say 600. You have $100,000 in equity in the home. And you can always refinance to lower the rate if, if that's the concern. But always is, what's the best time to buy a house? It's when you're ready. And if you're ready now, you gotta go ahead and pull the trigger. Love it, love it, thank you. Adam? It's a nice that I got to go last for this one because uh -huh. um, you know between between the two of them it you know really kind of um, culminates my answer right. Um, I, the, the Omar sentiments exactly um, when the people are saying you know it's when's the right time or telling me it's not the right time you know best time is is always going to be now, um, <clears throat> and you know again with, without even personal experience right that's just uh, uh, something that's factual right it's only going to go up usually for the for the most part um and you know when it's worth coming down with the interest rates you're going to be paying that additional money on on the price of the home anyway so it's, it's one way or the other um you know you're you're going to pick the lesser of the two evils i suppose um but as far as you know uh, make sure it is where you want to where you want to end up to walt's point um you know we looked at a lot of houses um in different places of the state and uh, we found that, you know, uh, where we wanted to go was south, right? And that was not anywhere near uh, my intentions originally. Um, but going down there again, seeing what was offered around there, um, you know, everything that, that it was um, made, made that decision a little bit easier, helped making that decision. So uh, make sure that it's, uh, that you're ready for it. And if you're ready for it, now is the best time. And just make sure that it's uh, going to be somewhere where you can see yourself uh, living, growing, whether it's a family yourself, you know, uh, that, that would be it. If I could just make one last, I'd love to always jump in and talk, but one last thing of course, of course, <laughs> to Omar's, to Omar's point, And this is one of Adam's phrases. So I'm kind of stealing from both of them. You date the rate, you marry, what is it? You marry the home, correct? You date the rate, you marry the home. So marry the house, no better the time rate. than the present. You know, the rates, rates are going to be what the rates are going to be. You date that rate, but you marry that home. I love it. I love it. And my piece of advice is marry multiple <laughs> municipal credit union because <laughs> you know what you're talking about and make sure you're, you're talking to experts because there's a lot to learn and there's a lot to find in the internet that's not accurate. And so you make sure that when you're making these big decisions, you're you're speaking to people like yourselves who have the experience and can provide the valuable information. So I am so grateful to the three of you, Walter, Omar, Adam. Thank you so much for taking your time this evening to share with us these important tips. Again, this is recorded. Everyone's going to get a link to it. So you're going to be able to watch it. Please share it with your friends, share it with your family. They, they will thank you for it. Um, and uh, we appreciate everyone being here. I wish everyone, please stay safe. Stay healthy and I uh, look forward to seeing you on our next webinar. Good night, everybody. Good night. Thank you. Thank you all.